Today is finally the day that we are going to be attempting to start the 2JZ32. I believe I have everything right now. Although I know with cars that nothing ever goes to plan. So I'm assuming that something's gonna go wrong at some point today. And uh, hopefully it's not too detrimental and maybe we can get this thing started today. So I have a base map ready to go. I need to do a few things which I'm gonna go ahead and explain before we can try and start this thing. And then yeah, hopefully we can get a first start. I guess we'll, we'll see, I'm gonna try. One of the first things that we have to do is install a freeze plug into our distributor hole, which they make block offs for this, but they're expensive and they're all the way across the United States. And I don't feel like paying a lot of money for a little tiny billet piece to cover that. So we have a 30 cent, 30 millimeter freeze plug, and that is going to fit right in there. Which I don't know how to show that, but the way we're gonna do that is by grabbing just this socket right here, which will fit good enough. And then using some persuasion, we're gonna get this guy in there and block that up. So that's the first order of business is that. That went in way easier than expected. As you can see, it's very flush around. And yeah, I went in with a few taps of this hammer, or I mean persuasion, not hammer. I didn't hit it. <laughs> the next order of business is going to be this mess back here. Now, what is this? This is my battery cable, my battery relocation that goes all the way to the trunk, that big red wire there. And that comes up to this distribution block and that just gives everything um, 12 volt. So, um, and this is not ignition, this is actually just straight up battery power. So we have a few lines we need to connect, like that guy there. And then all our grounds need to go back on. We got a ground down there that needs to ground the block. Um, just cleaning up this corner a little bit and get all our wires figured out. And then we'll move on from there. I'm not sure what all is left. I gotta think. Might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but everything is properly grounded. So we have our block ground going up there, which you can't really see. And then our head ground is there and they both just ground right here to the chassis. And then that other ground, that other ground there is for the relay box that's inside the car. So, and before all you guys comment about my distribution block and how I should have a ring connector instead of that set screws, I agree. I will be swapping that. And I actually have one here somewhere. I don't know where it's at, but I do have one and I, in the future I am going to do that. But for now, it's going to serve its purpose. So we are getting there. Let's see, what is the next thing that needs to be done? Obviously we need to put coolant in the car, AKA water and inside the car which is going to be a mess for a while because I don't plan on tightening all of this up or tidying all this up until it's fully running and functional. So we got to get our ECU in and connect a few other uh, auxiliary cables and things like that. And then, man, we, we can actually try and start this thing. That's crazy to think about. One quick thing that I just noticed actually while I was just messing around the bay is this radiator hose, my lower hose has a kink in it right here. And now part of that is because I went down underneath my sway bar, which it's also hard to get an angle, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop this hose off and I'm going to shorten this hose so that it comes over the sway bar and it won't kink there anymore. Daisy, what are you doing? <laughs> Thank you. 
the radiator hose is officially fixed and now it's not kinked and it goes up over that sway bar down there. I just went ahead and I checked the oil level and it's perfect and the oil looks great. It looks brand new, which it is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unplug everything except the starter relay. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the key by hand and make sure that the starter is working properly. And, you know, crank it over a few times, get some oil pressure. And then I'm going to go ahead and start messing with some wiring stuff. And I need to go through on ECU master software and I need to change all my inputs and make sure all the settings are right. And then we can go ahead and give it a go. As you just heard, my starter is perfect. It works. So we know that's good. We're going to go ahead and continue with wiring then. And I've already verified we got fuel pressure, so fuel's not an issue. So let's see. Yeah, I guess I'm going to go ahead and get the ECU out and the old laptop. And we're going to get to work. We need a few things plugged in, nothing major. But we have our two wires from over there on our gauges, because you remember that because you watched that video. And then we have coolant temp, I think, needs to go still. Can't remember, but besides the point, let's go ahead and get to it. currently remote tuning. I have Brandon, my tuner, that is remoted in right now and he's making some changes and we're going to go ahead and try and start this thing and get it idling good. This is interesting. I've never done anything like this. But we'll see what Brandon can do. Hopefully we can get this thing running good because yesterday it was not. <laughs> Right, we got to start but we have a big exhaust leak which i'm sure you heard and it is going to be one of these bolts here now this is an exhaust turbine housing bolt and it's on the very bottom i know exactly which one it is and i'm probably gonna have to take off the whole front of the turbo and the drain line and it's gonna be a pain but i do need to get that together unfortunately but that's the knocking sound you're hearing is an exhaust leak nothing huge so I assure you the engine is not blown, but we're on revision three right now and we're going to keep going until we can get it to rev good, so stay tuned. Get it.
While editing this video, I realized there's a little spot without context that you're probably going to get confused by. And if I remember correctly, it's right when I'm explaining that I need to get into the wiring. What ended up happening was I had my grounds hooked up wrong, so we weren't getting fuel. And then on top of that, the ECU was reading 50,000 RPMs. So we knew something was wrong and uh, it ended up being that. So we figured that out and we loaded up the base map, which again, I didn't really film this because we had people over. I had Roger and Jared here helping and uh, yeah, we got it loaded up and it ended up starting, but it was running pretty bad. So then it ends up cutting to me tuning, remote tuning. So remote tuning, that was the next day. So that was after we had already started it. I went ahead and I remote tuned it with my, my tuner and we got it running really good. So that's some context that I knew I was missing. And uh, I need to keep figuring out how to take videos because I always forget to just pick up the camera and record this stuff while it's happening. So now that our first start is out of the way, the next video is going to be trying to get this thing on the road. Now, currently I'm waiting on some parts, so it's probably gonna be at least a week or two before I can actually get this thing on the road. And, uh, you know, it's it's not anything major. I gotta get some brake lines on and some, some fuel lines figured out. But yeah, that's gonna be the next video. I'm gonna go ahead and end this one off here. And uh, yeah, we did it. I officially have a big turbo 2JZ 300ZX. Now we just got to get it running on the road.